This morning on Wake Up With Hope, we're making crispy hash browns. Our friends from Livet are also joining us to share some important tips on reducing cholesterol. Plus, we'll have music and more. Come along with us. Happy Monday morning to you, and thank you for joining us this morning at Wake Up With Hope. Friends, how was your weekend? We really hope it was a good one. Today is Veterans Day, and we want to pause to take a moment to say Happy Veterans Day to all those who have served. We truly appreciate your commitment and your sacrifice to this country, and we wish all of God's blessings on your life. And friends, don't forget to thank a veteran today. Absolutely, and friends, we have lots in store today. So let's get started by taking a look back at what took place on this day in history. On this day in history in 1973, the Soviet Union announced that it would not participate in a World Cup soccer match against Chile on November 21, citing its opposition to the recent overthrow of Chilean President Salvador Allende. The match was scheduled to be held in Santiago. The International Football Federation had given the Soviets until November 11 to make their decision. Following the Soviet refusal, the Federation disqualified their team from the World Cup. This marked the first time in World Cup history that a team had boycotted due to political reasons. You know, friends, have you ever been rejected? You know, we think about the child on the playground who no one wants to play with. But even as adults, we have moments of rejection or that feeling of not fitting in anywhere. But isn't it wonderful to know that God doesn't reject us. Instead, he loves us with an everlasting love. He loves us unconditionally and he answers when we call. In fact, he welcomes us with open arms. You know, it's a love and acceptance like no other. So friends, take hold of him today and draw near to the one who will never turn you away. Amen. Praise Amen. God for a wonderful Savior. Amen. Potatoes are versatile, but they're also chock full of health benefits. And they have no cholesterol and they're low in sodium. And did you know they're also great for heart health, bone health, digestion, and even eye health. So this morning, Gia and her team have a delicious way to help us incorporate more potatoes in our diet. It's time for crispy hash browns. Today we're making hash browns! We are making hash browns, but these are homemade hash browns. We make this at any time, breakfast, lunch or dinner. We love hash browns because these ones are different to the usual ones. The ones you get from like fast food places are full of oil and they've been fried and that oil's been used over and over again. So this is a great recipe for you to make at home for the kids and for yourself without all that yucky stuff in it. Oh, yeah. Now, I make a sauce to go, this is just the potatoes, and that's about four potatoes, and they're just being grated. And I have yeah, cashews. cashews. So can you pass me the cashews? I love cashews. I really, really want to make Okay, there you go. So the cashews are what we make the sauce with. And what else have we got there? We've got onions, onions. but we're not gonna put the onions in the bowl. The onions will go in with the um, potatoes. Here I've got garlic powder, onion powder, and some vegetable stock, just vegetable powder. Okay, and I'll put that in there. I'll put this in. Okay, so we just need the water, and we'll just blend that until it's smooth. You might need to blend for a while. And I'll put this in there. The onions and the potato, just a second. Okay, so what we did is we just blended the sauce which the, which, with the cashews and the water and the herbs. Whoa, don't want to get that all over me. And Moses, can you put the onions? We've just got quarter of an onion or however much onion you want. Half an onion, quarter of onion. I love the onions in it. And then we put the sauce on top. It's very thick, so we'll, oh, are you okay? Okay. Oh, sorry, did I get you? Oh, from the onion. Oh, okay. Now, can you mix that through? Mix. Yeah, mix, mix, mix until all that sauce goes through the potato. 
and then we're going to spread it thinly. So once you spread it thinly on a tray. Mom, can I spread it? Yeah, you can help me spread it. I want to spread it. Okay, spread it thin. So now we're going to put this in the oven at 200 degrees. We're going to cook it until it's brown. Um, just a golden brown dry tinge on the top. The thinner you do it, probably the better. Okay, thank you, Moses. Thank you. You're getting my hand. I want to help. I want to do it. Thank you. Okay, let's put this in the oven. So there you go. That's what it looks like. It does. Mushroom and potato pie. So our hash browns are ready and it looks awesome. Look how crispy it is looking. Oh, wow. I'm, I just can't wait to try this, but I'm actually going to just put it on the kids' plate because as a snack or as for lunch, because it is actually quite filling because it's potato. And there you have it, your hash browns. You can have it for breakfast with your beans. The kids love some baked beans on the side of this with their hash brown. Try it, let us know what you think. We'll see you next time. This morning we have special guests from the Live It program at Loma Linda sharing practical ways to reduce cholesterol. When it comes to your health, it's okay to go a little nuts especially since heart disease is so prevalent in our country. In fact, one third of Americans have high LDL cholesterol, the bad kind of cholesterol. Those with high total cholesterol have twice the risk of heart disease compared to people whose cholesterol levels are under 200. With heart disease being the number one killer in the United States, researchers advise us to go nuts with our health. Back in 1993, Loma Linda University Health made a landmark discovery that reversed the health advice from the American Heart Association. Up until then, the organization advised the public against eating nuts because of the high fat content. However, Dr. Joan Sabate discovered that adding one to two servings of nuts to our daily diets could actually cut our risk of having a heart attack in half. During the initial study, the researchers put subjects on a two-month diet known as the American Heart Association Step 1 Diet to lower cholesterol. Half of those subjects were fed the same diet with 20% of the calories coming from walnuts. The following month, the group switched. The walnut diet lowered much more the cholesterol, particularly the LDL cholesterol that is considered the bad cholesterol without changes in the good cholesterol, the HDL cholesterol. Nuts are rich in unsaturated fat, a healthy type of fat that our bodies need to reduce LDLs, the bad cholesterol in our blood. In addition, walnuts have high levels of omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3s help lower levels of triglycerides, a type of fat in the bloodstream. But nuts are also loaded with protein. Percent-wise and quantity-wise is even greater than the protein that is in meat or in many other animal products. Besides fat and protein, nuts have many other micronutrients, such as minerals, vitamins. For more than 20 years, Dr. Sabate has been studying the effect of nuts on our health and summarized that one to two servings of nuts a day lowers cholesterol by 10%. So what are today's health tips? Eat a handful of nuts a day to cut your risk of heart disease in half and reduce your cholesterol. Every morning that I have a smoothie, I put whatever is the ripe fruit that is available and then uh, two or three handful of nuts, and that is a perfect smoothie. Other ways to incorporate nuts into your diet include topping salads with nuts instead of croutons, or adding them on pizza and pasta. There is your tip for the day on how you can live healthier, longer. Who pays for your peace? What is the price of your freedom? Think for a minute. Peace always comes at a price. Conflict is the natural outcome of our rebellious nature, and thus shall be expected. Freedom is also costly. Enslavement is the norm in the realm of evil. No matter whether it is imposed by an oppressor or if it is any other bondage acquired by choice. 
The peace and freedom that we often take for granted are to be looked upon as banners smeared by the blood of our brethren. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Our eternal as well as our temporal peace and freedom are guaranteed at the precious cost of life. So take a minute to thank those who are willing to lose their lives for you. It's now time for music as Fountain View Academy reminds us to turn our eyes upon Jesus.
Are you enjoying today's show? Well, inspire someone else and share us with a friend. Or you can visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to see more inspiring content. And subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with us. In just a few moments, we'll be right back with today's devotional thought with our friends from The Voice of Prophecy. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. We pray your day is starting off on the right foot as you soak in the love found in Jesus. This morning, our friends from Voice of Prophecy are sharing an inspiring devotional thought. The other night, I had one of those crazy dreams that don't make any sense whatsoever. In my dream, I had parked my truck and trailer in the upper lot of a city park-like property, then unloaded a four-wheeler and tore off through a dirt trail that ran parallel to the lower parking lot. At the end of the lot, I pulled onto the pavement and was going to head back to the truck when the quad died. I immediately realized that I had forgotten to top off the fuel. I pushed the quad to the side when another truck with quads drove onto the lot. I recall asking them to watch mine while I ran up the hill to get my truck. They agreed and off I went. But instead of staying in the parking lot, I entered a building that was not initially there when I had first arrived. I walked quickly through the building to get to the other side because somehow instinctively I knew that at the front of this building was the upper lot. As I walked the halls, I noticed that I was in some type of medical facility, and the floor that I was on was lower than the upper lot. When I found the stairs, I started to climb up. And the climb seemed to go on forever, from one floor to another, until I was in an old part of the building. I went up a few more landings until I reached a top floor room. From that empty, dust-filled room, I could look out the weathered window panes onto the front lot and realize that I had climbed about four floors too high. That seemed strange because I had somehow missed the front doors on the main floor. I decided to go back down, but as I looked around, the stairs were gone. There was an opening in the floor where the stairs had been, so I used that to climb down into the room below. Once in that room, there didn't seem to be any, any way down except through a couple of holes in the plywood. I was really confused because I knew that there had been stairs there before. And then, well, I woke up. You ever have dreams like that? Dreams that leave you stumped when you wake up? Such was the dream of one of my favorite characters in the Bible, a Babylonian king, king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. You can read all about him in the book of Daniel. In Daniel 2, the king had a disturbing dream. When he woke up in the morning, he couldn't remember the dream, but keenly felt its importance. He summoned all of his counselors, including sorcerers, magicians, and astrologers, and presented them with the dilemma. His ask was simple enough. They were to tell him his dream and then interpret it. An impossible task, of course, but the king didn't care. He promised fame and riches to the one that could do it and death if they couldn't. Unfortunately, they were pinned to the wall. They couldn't make up an interpretation as they had often done with his dreams in the past because he could not tell them the dream. And if they made up the dream, he would immediately know that they were frauds. So they stalled. But the king would have none of it. Either they work their magic immediately or face death. Miraculously, many of his counselors' lives were spared through the faith of four faithful youth who had been brought to Babylon as captives from Jerusalem. To Daniel, in answer to his and his three companions' prayers, God gave the same dream and the interpretation which he was able to relay to the desperate king. It turns out that the dream was of great importance. In fact, God revealed to this heathen king the history of world kingdoms that would rise and fall until God himself established his eternal reign. Humbled, Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged the might and power of Daniel's God and promoted Daniel to ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the wise men. He promoted Daniel's three friends as well. But the praising of Daniel's God was short-lived. In Daniel chapter 3, in response to a coup that had arisen against the king, according to some historians, Nebuchadnezzar erected a statue similar to the one he had been shown in the Daniel 2 dream, except that this statue was all gold, or at least plated in gold, instead of having just the head of gold as in the dream. 
The king summoned all of the important people of the kingdom and ordered all to bow to this statue that represented him. The Bible does not say where Daniel was. Perhaps the king knew that Daniel would not approve or bow, so sent him away on errands. But he apparently forgot of Daniel's three friends. When the order was given, all bowed but the three faithful. After a conversation with the king and an outright refusal to bow, the infuriated king ordered the furnace heated seven times the normal temperature and had the three Hebrews tossed in the flames. The furnace was so hot that it instantly killed the soldiers who tossed the boys in. When the king looked, he was startled to see four men walking around in the, in the flames and exclaimed that one looked like the Son of God. Humbled again, the king called for the three to come out of the flame, and all marveled that they were unscathed. The king then praised the God of heaven once again. All was well until eventually Nebuchadnezzar let pride creep up in his heart. In chapter 4 of Daniel, the king had another dream. This time he remembered the dream and again called in all of his counselors. After telling the dream, he quickly noticed that they stood clueless, so he called for Daniel. Daniel immediately understood the dream to be a rebuke from God and a warning to the king of what would happen to him if he did not let go of his arrogance and pride. For a time, the king walked humbly. But at the end of one year, he forgot about what had been proclaimed by God against him. And in a moment of weakness, he proclaimed himself as the great builder of Babylon, who created all the wonders found therein for his own honor and majesty. At this, an angel from heaven pronounced judgment in his hearing, and immediately Nebuchadnezzar was turned into a human beast. For the next seven years, he ate grass like oxen, his hair grew like feathers, and his nails like eagles' claws. After the seven-year period, God restored the kingdom to, kingdom to him, and the Bible records in Daniel 4.34 that he blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. Notice the progression from a heathen king to humble servant of the Most High God. This is what growing up into Christ looks like. God is a pursuing God who will stop at nothing to give us opportunities to embrace Him as Lord and Savior. He reaches us in our deepest pits and cleanses us from sin, then restores us to sons and daughters of God. It's not an easy road. Like Nebuchadnezzar, often our own pride and desires get in the way. But if we continue moving forward, putting God first, He promises to make us new. Friend, where are you today? It doesn't matter what you've done, said, thought, or how hard and far you've fallen. God is there to rescue you. If He can restore King Nebuchadnezzar, He can do the same for you. I invite you to reach out to His mighty hand and let Him transform you into His image. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for reaching out to us. Lord, and it is true, there's nothing that we can do to push away the love of God. Your arm is strong enough. Your arm is long enough to reach into any pit that we're in. It doesn't matter how high of a mountain we're at, you can bring us, no matter what we've done, Lord, you can forgive us and you can cleanse us. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the blessing of loving us and transforming us and help us to walk in your ways be with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, we at The Voice of Prophecy pray that you wake up with hope each and every day. Thank you for starting your Monday morning with us. Whatever this new week has in store for you, you can have hope. Thank you so much for that inspiring thought. And friends, thank you so much for being with us here today and watching Wake Up With Hope. Please join us tomorrow morning as Jesus 101 will be with us to share a morning devotional. We'll have a dedicated prayer session and a special feature on self-esteem. And if you enjoyed today's devotional messages and you would like to learn more about the Bible, visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. Our free Bible study guides are sure to make a significant impact in your life. Again, friends, that's hope.study. And before we go, we want to share with you a Bible promise. And today's Bible promise comes from Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 9. It says, carefully follow the terms of this covenant so that you may prosper in everything you do. Hmm. You know, friends, God has given us 
just the simple instruction necessary to live successfully. That's carefully following His ways. And it's a promise that cannot mm, fail. What a beautiful <laughs> promise, friends. Take hold of it today. Amen. Cling to Jesus as your sure guide and friend. And we wish you a happy Monday. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, today, Lord, we are so eager to go right into our day because you will be with us. And Lord, as you guide our steps, we want to be obedient to your principles because we know that when we do so, our life will be led in the right direction. So Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit and fill us with hope. And we thank you in Jesus' name, amen.